Okay, we're going to talk about how to use the Odyssey CLX to read fluorescently labeled membranes. So we open Image Studio, and you can pick your uh, work area. So if you don't have one, you can create your own area. So I'll go into mine. Opens up the screen. Uh, and then we can take our membrane and put it into the machine. So here I'm just going to use a piece of blotting paper because uh, I don't have a membrane ready to image. But what I would say is normally you would carry your membrane here like between two pieces of blotting paper. We open the machine and then we have tweezers either here or there should be some lying around. You can pick up your membrane and place it onto the area. If this is dirty, you can use some ethanol and some Kim wipes to clean this off. Um, and just make sure your membrane, you don't want to touch especially the middle part of your membrane with your fingers or even really gloves um, because it will mess up how the membrane looks, um, especially earlier on in the process, so it will mess with the transfer and it can also make the image not come out as nicely. So we're going to take this, I would be using tweezers, we're going to place it in. And what you want to note, on this stage, you can see that there are grid markings. So that actually the top, we can't go all the way up against this line because the first tick is actually here. So we have to make sure that the top of our blot is at least in line with this first tick. Same thing on this side, we can't go all the way to the left. We have to make sure it's at least at this corner. So we're going from the first tick of each one. I'm going out two major ticks and then one and a half major ticks in the bottom direction. So you can close this. We need to know that because then we come here and on this plot, under the Acquire tab, we draw the size of the area that we need to scan. If you scan the entire bed, um, it's gonna take quite a long time. So we just want to scan the area where our membrane is on. So you can come to where this, next to the progress bar, this gear and it gives different options in terms of um, preset sizes, but what I typically do is hit membrane, and then you can sort of click in this area and drag this box up. So if you remember, we were in the two major ticks and then one and a half major ticks in this direction, so this is my area. See, this will take seven minutes. Um, your membrane will probably be smaller than this. If you were to do a membrane, not a piece of blotting paper, it would probably be about this big. Okay, now that we've set the size of our region, we can go through some of these different settings. So a lot of this you won't mess with. We want to keep 700 and 800 both checked, so we read at both of those channels. This is the quality. Um, right now I have it on sort of a low quality, um, but you can increase this if you were going to take like a publication lot. Um, and you can also increase the resolution here. Um, and normally, sometimes it gives a time estimate, but you'll notice at the lowest quality, it still will take maybe three or four minutes to image your blot. At the higher qualities, it will take upwards of 10 minutes. So if you're just taking a look, you can keep it on low quality and then scan it again if you want to get a better copy. Once we're all ready, uh, we hit the start button. I'm not going to do that only because uh, we have a piece of blotting paper in there and not a membrane, um, but this would take a few minutes to scan. And obviously we don't want to open the scanner bed while it's running. At this point, once it's taken your image, you'll go over to the image tab and you can see it has all of my previous images stored down here in my workspace. Um, it has an image ID, an acquire time, what channels, the resolution, all these settings. And you can rename actually here uh, the image name. You can leave a comment that's useful in terms of um, like what experiment it was. I should probably have left more comments in here. And then you have your blot. We can adjust what output it's giving us just to make the image a little bit more clean. So um, if you click on either 700 or like let's do 800, it shows just that channel. I've already adjusted this, but the, on this little histogram here, you have um, different threshold cutoffs you can adjust. So like this left one, I've already pulled in towards on the right, but if I move it back to the left, this is more like what my blot looked like when it was taken, more background. Um, and if we move this to the right, we're setting the black level at a further point, so we cut out some of that background. Uh, the top slider I've moved also towards the center. Uh, the further away you move it from the center, um, the dimmer your signal will get. Um, and this is sort of personal preference, how bright you're trying to make 
um, your bands versus your other bands. Uh, make sure that if you're showing blots in direct comparison that you set these values uh, similarly. Although really, if you're making comparisons, they should be made on the same blot anyway. Uh, if we click on both of these, we can show both. So you, I would also go through the 700 channel and set my brightness. Um, and then I can click on both to get my overall view. We can go up to the menu and we go to export as digital media for like if in a presentation or if you were gonna print it, um, you could do a print format. And then there's this image studio file and you can hit zip file, um, which is really a great option um, because this will allow you to take the zip file to your computer um, and maybe put it on the network drive in your lab for later use. And then you can open it in Image Studio Lite, which is a software for your com personal computer, um, and you don't have to come back to this computer to edit your plots. Um, I'll just note there's also this Analysis tab. Or, well, in the um, Image tab, there's a ton of different transformations. You can rotate your blot. Often you may need to flip it if you didn't put it on the scanner the right way. So all these are options you have. And then there's this analysis um, tool where you could, for example, if you add this rec add rectangles, um, you can draw a rectangle around the regions and then it will quantify um, the brightness of that region. And you can do that, add rectangle. We can do that all over. So these are standard sized and then I could come in, oops, let's just back up a few steps. So once you just sort of add them, they come in at a default size, and then you're able to then change the size of these rectangles to fit your band. Um, personally, what I like to do sometimes, if especially if my blot didn't come out very regularly, is I'll very carefully and painstakingly draw freehand and right now it's giving me a little bit of a trouble. I think the mouse is just freaking out a little bit. But you can draw a freehand shape, especially if your bands are kind of weird shapes. Um, and you can get the most exact bounding around your area. And then like it did before, um, it will show, it's not freehand, sorry, at a rectangle. This is sort of auto detected the shape of the band and it has an intensity value for the red channel and the green channel. And if we come down to the shapes tab, it has my number one and my number two shape, 700 and 800 channel, and then the signal, um, it calculates the intensity. So you could do this across your blot to quantify and then copy that into Excel or Prism for data analysis. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, you save everything um, and you can close. And then I'll note that this flash drive we have around has the installer for Image Studio Lite. Um, Image Studio Lite is not offered anymore by Litecore, um, but we still have the installer available for you so you can install it on your computer. And again, that's the free software that allows you to edit your blocks later on your own personal computer um, instead of having to come back to the core. Uh, please make sure to return the flash drive when you're done and leave the area clean. Uh, remember to take your membrane out of the machine. Don't pick it up with your hands like I just did. And if there's gunk left on here, take a Kim wipe and ethanol and clean off the surface. Let us know if you have any questions. Okay, we're gonna talk briefly about how to use this Litecore Odyssey FC system. Very similar to the CLX. Um, a lot of people in our department use this for um, blocks that they have labeled chemiluminescent. Um, we can hit this eject button. And there's, unlike the CLX, there's no selection region. You just, um, one of these trays, uh, there's usually already one in here, you just place your blot in the center. We can open the software and again, create, create a new workspace for you or open your, you or your lab's existing workspace. And then at this point, um, you can see the last plot that was taken on here. Um, it, will, it won't show the same uh, bounding area that the CLX shows because again, we don't select a region, it just images the whole tray. So we can just go right ahead, pick our channels, 700 or 800, or Kemi is right here, which is something the CLX won't do. Um, and then we hit acquire image, which I'm not gonna do, because that was just a piece of blotting paper, not a real membrane. And it will take our image for us. Uh, the CLX in general has better quality as well, which is uh, one reason to use that if your blots are fluorescently probed. Once you have your image, um, all the controls are very similar to the CLX. 
Uh, you can adjust the tones over here. Um, you can access all your previous images down here. If we go to the anal you can make different rotations and adjustments. And at the analysis tab, um, like in the CLX video, we can add or draw different selections around our bands. In the shapes tab, um, it will populate with the intensities of those shapes. Um, and you can take that data, those data elsewhere um, to quantify your blots. As before, you can save. Um, if you go to the file menu, you can export as images or as the Image Studio zip file to open an Image Studio light on your personal computer. When you're done, you just eject. Uh, you should be doing this with tweezers um, if you had a real membrane. Uh, clean off the tray if it's dirty and close the machine and shut the software. Let us know if you have any questions.